Sam is the co-founder and director of SEL Farm, who enabled us to start our project Plant the Future. The goal is to support smallholder farmers with an agroforestry project without any chemical inputs and without irrigation. The world has found the juice. So legally we donated 20 hectares to the foundation and then we decided to implement the training center on, on, on this land. So we've used up about 9.7 hectares now and we still have 10 hectares to play with. Two months ago we started uh, next to our farm an agroforestry project together with the local community. Without irrigation we want to show them that this project can serve their needs for the full year. The trees uh, are not yet very tall because they are only two months old, but uh, we will see very soon how they grow. We were a little bit late here. That means we couldn't integrate some of, of, of the common plants like the banana and the papaya or the melon. We can start uh, harvesting again. Uh, we, have, we, we see a lot of, of uh, black pots here. So. They can be harvested already. What do you expect with the rice? How, how long does it take until we can harvest the rice? Uh, from next week. Actually, agroforestry systems are, are uh, based on uh, integrating the trees into the crop systems. So we started implementing different systems, but we, we started realizing that actually this system here with tree rows every, every six meters is, is uh, uh, the most favorable one, the easiest one to implement non, in a non-irrigated structure. We want to prove for them that they don't need the fertilizer and that's why we are setting up the pattern. Uh, we, have, we have one part, uh, here we have four lines of rice. Then in between we have, we have uh, three to four lines of green gram, which is a nitrogen fixing uh, part. So this is about nutrient cycling. So depending on the on the trees we are planting, we are cho always choosing the spacing due to the height of the trees so that they always get enough light and that they are not covering the whole system. So above the soil it's about getting access to, uh, to light and carbon dioxide and below the soil it is getting access with the different root systems to nutrients and water. So cows don't only serve to provide meat and, and milk, but they actually are important when you want to do organic farming without any fertilizers and, and pesticides. So their role is actually to, to deliver manure and also to help uh, supporting the plant health. The cow dung has a lot of ammonia. And if it's not properly cured and you transfer it to the farm, then the ammonia will start to attack your plants and killing them instead of helping the soil to make the plants grow better. We move it into this pit. First, we have a layer of the cow dung at the bottom. Then we have a layer of the, the, the leftover fodder. And then a layer again of the cow dung. And it just continues. This is good because then we'll be able to spread the heat evenly. And then the curing will be even. Within a month to two months, we should be able to use it. In the whole society, actually, they, they play a key role in, in, in supplying uh, meat, supplying milk. But one of the biggest challenges uh, is actually to, to grow the fodder. When we can provide enough uh, fodder, especially green fodder during the, the dry season, we can increase actually the milk production of the cows. These are, are uh, local Fulani cows, uh, so they are not producing a lot of milk. Uh, normally, when they, when they just are roaming around, they give maybe half a litre or seven deciliter of, of milk per day. But we could see here when we can feed them properly, they give one and a half or, or even more. Uh, most of the small farmers who have only one or two acres of land, 
they have the, the biggest challenges to produce the fodder during the dry season. So we have a lot of, of conflicts because cows are roaming around and also the Fulani conflict actually is, is, is also major, mainly a, a fodder conflict. Well, we have calculated here now that um, a cow roughly needs a tenth of a hectare uh, per year. So when we are looking at that, we can easily integrate grass rows in one hectare land, for instance, for a small farmer, and he can produce when he's planting nape grass and some other grass varieties together uh, with the fodder trees as well, like Lucina and, and Claricidia. So the multiplication of grasses play a vital role in the, uh, role in the agroforestry system. So we are cutting down napier grass now, elephant grass, and we are multiplying the elephant grass in other places. So basic, basically at the end of the cropping season, we try to plant napier grass as a cover crop for the dry season. It will multiply and by the end of the dry season, we let it grow up to two meters when the rain starts and then we cut it again, we take it for multiplication. In the beginning was the napier grass here. And the napier grass, the stalk occupy a space of uh, 50 centimeter, the, the space it, it covers. And we want to see the number of the stems and the number from the rootstock. And here, from the rootstock, what we get here is 34. We are now using it for transplanting in another different place. I mean, why? From this place we remove, we have to return one back for it to regrow. One, two, How many do we have from the stems? 119. 119. So it's it's uh, it's more than 150 yes. pieces actually. We can get we can get from as one, a reproduction from one bundle from only. One bundle. We have actually 70 square meters. And on 70 square meters, we can produce this, uh, this massive reproduction of grasses. Well, up to now, the farmers normally uh, think uh, grasses have no value and trees have no value. Actually, grasses and trees, they are disturbing the crops. We try to, uh, to prove to them that actually they are very beneficial and they are generating income. We can really reproduce them. The farmer has no problem to, to buy seeds. He can multiply them by himself. We have a simple way of communicating to the farmer. We bring them and demonstrate what we did here and show them. And we even show them how the cotton is done and how the planting. They will switch it to it because when they come here and they see the Napier is looking nice and beautiful, most of them have said that they have their land so that they will plant it inside the land. Then they allow the cow to, to be grazing inside and going outside. Napier is just one of the grasses we are multiplying. We have identified at least six grass varieties that can be multiplied and they are, they are remaining green during the whole season. So all these grasses, they also grow in the dry areas. Dividing rootstock is one, but the cutting is one. Because cutting actually is the most easiest one for the farmer. He just cuts a piece of the, uh, of the grass or uh, of, of the, the fertilizer tree. He puts it in the soil and it's growing. But we can also put it in the plant nursery, in the plastic bags to sell it outside. The plant nursery is, the, is one of the most important foundations for uh, agroforestry projects. Because without the trees, we cannot do anything in a proper way. So we are getting a lot of seeds actually from, from areas where we still have wild forests. Mr. Mohammed is actually doing a lot of seed sourcing for us and he helped us here to, to build up the plant nursery. If you want to establish an agroforestry plantation and you don't want to establish a nursery, it will be very expensive. So when you establish a nursery, the cost is far, far less by establishing exploitation within the agroforestry. Employment within the community itself very vital and important for the community for the employment. It can enhance the climate change because of global warming. Our goal is, is uh, to reach the, the level of about one million trees per annum. 
that we can really upscale agro agroforestry projects. We are currently at a level of about 45 different, uh, different tree varieties. Some we have in large scale and some we have in small scale. We are uh, close to 100,000 trees or even above. The bigger ones, teak, these are at the beginning, they, they, we have numbers of about 5,000, 6,000 or something like that. But of course, we have our own needs for the expansion of the village plant pool concepts. And we hope that we are now also uh, being able to deliver to other organizations that are going to the villages doing the same. And the third, uh, the third leg of our uh, economy here will be that we start uh, really uh, merchandising what we are what we are producing so building up a marketing for the plants the permanent uh, production of vegetables we need to have an irrigated system because we have long dry spans here and so up to five months we have no rain so this is an irrigated system it's based on tree lines because we need a very high and permanent nutrient cycling. So the function of the tree lines is basically to produce, first of all, a limited shade, and secondly, to have a permanent and fast reproduction of nutrients, and this helps to, to, uh, to promote the water, carbon, and nutrient cycles. This is necessary for the permanent production. We started here also from the scratch. This system is two years old. Uh, the soil was very sandy. When we are looking at the soil now, we have added a lot of biomass to the soil. Uh, it is improving now. This is a scaled system at the village level. We normally start with small system kitchen garden models where uh, that can be irrigated from the lo local water supply system and don't need any, any proper irrigation system. The cow dung and the chicken dung, they are, they are um, supporting this kind of system. We can do things faster than just with uh, the, uh, the nutrients that we are bringing back from the, from the plants. This is our um, MBS2, that is the modified Brazilian system, the vegetable section. So in each section we have um, 4.2, meters in which we plant our vegetables. And we divided the uh, 4.8 into four bears. The first one is 50, 80, 80, 50. So we have a template in which we plant. And what we plant, we don't repeat it. So the, the, the first plot there, um, we have um, uh, the first bear, which is by 50 cm, we have aubergine and sweet corn. Then in between, we integrate green gram. The essence of the green gram is to add nitrogen to the soil. Because what we're processing here is uh, organic farming. We don't use organic, um, inorganic fertilizers. So in between, we plant in a distance of the green gram. And all these crops are compactable. You know, there are some crops you can plant together with each other. But this crop now we are planting the vegetables that are compacted with each other, they grow fine. The motion is to help to return the soil content, the, mo the moisture content in the soil, because we are going towards the dry season. We don't need to irrigate all the time in, in very short cycles. Secondly, the decaying uh, material is, is helping to produce more carbon in the soil. And, uh, but permanently, actually, it's reducing the temperature in the whole system, so we don't have hot temperature in the soil. So be careful, be careful always to cover the full trench with the mulching material, but not covering the, the turmeric. So it is important and take, all, take out all the weeds between the cassiatora. Huh? We have 50 cm, 50 cm for the cassiatora as far as I know. Huh? Okay. We have entered into a collaboration with Pax Herbals. Um, it's a company that is uh, a Benedictine most monastery in uh, Evo that is producing traditional uh, African herbal medicine for almost 25 years. And they are the leading producer in Nigeria, if not in, in, uh, uh, in, in Africa as such. So currently we are multiplying Cassia Tora also to get more seeds that we can spread out to the farmers to, to multiply these plants. 
and become a major sup uh, supplier for Pax Herbals. And turmeric is a huge demand uh, currently, and uh, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. So we are multiplying uh, turmeric at large scale. The benefit for the community finally is that all the people in the rural areas, they normally have no money to go to the pharmacy, to the doctor to buy the chemical uh, medicine. So for them, it's a question of a basic health care system, a health care supply. So integrating and combining the medicinal plants with, with agroforestry, it's actually combining two basic needs of the communities. The vetri system uh, is, is a fruit food forest system. So the key commercial products are the fruit trees, uh, mainly the banana and the papaya. We still have one, 120 to 150 fruit trees like mango, uh, custard apple, guava and cashew inside. So the fruit trees are, are the, the basic substance and you see these are delivering income mainly in the dry season. We have to remove the dead leaves because these ones no longer have that biomass. So out of these two, we can't leave all of them. So we chop this one down, Tagani. So the easiest way of chopping, because if you look at a big farm, just chop the upper one. Put them down. All in one place. So now, the easiest way. So you see that one is, it is easier and faster. Bananas usually, we consider them as the mother of the, of the agroforestry systems. One, it is a fast growing plant with a lot of biomass. Some will not plant it for food, not at all, but for biomass. Why? Because when you look at the trunks of the bananas, it is water, full of water. That is why we want mainly in them. And you can see the amount of biomass you can get from just one harvesting. So that is the biggest secret about bananas in agroforestry systems. And then if you are also growing them commercially, like for food or for, for economy, they can give you a continuous yield. So the living fence is one uh, important structure. We have seen it during the storm in April, where uh, the whole uh, structure here was heavily damaged. We need to build up a proper uh, life fence as a wind protection for this system. So we immediately after the storm, we, we started planting Claricidia and we have a double row, an outer row and an inner row. Now we are pruning the, the outer row at the height of maybe um, one meter 20 that they multiply at, at that height and the inner one we let it we let it grow taller and we call we, we will prune them up once they have grown taller we have covered all the the basic uh, staple foods uh, in the system uh, out in the in the damakusa village plot and now we also can show the the uh, the remaining needs of the population which are wood production which are fruits a large-scale fruit fruit production that basically serves to cover the the dry period where they don't have anything to harvest setting up one hectare as a, a kind of a, a seed bank and plant pool for the village that they can multiply from there so actually reproduction is the key thing that we can multiply that we can upscale very fast at lowest possible cost. This is the example how to do it. What you what you think about and what you can see today? We so much animals na che ankle ba muna gona. To say the genin say sariki 
say be to say the fanya, or by the camel, whichever room far away. Don't the eke as a ma, so my ass gum so. Alla Sakuma Muna came when I 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 came to ada omun shi ba zamu ciruban shi ba amma annan da sun fara koya muna yi wannan yanzu kaga kagan ka shinkafa ga me ita to ga ga da dukkan akwai shi an dai muna mun shi haka ba zamu ci kudiya ba amma da sun zo sun koya muna gashi yanzu alhamdulillah Creating a village plant pool means that we can reduce a transformation, the costs of a transformation process from a monoculture system, a deficit agriculture to a surplus agriculture. Just giving the seeds into the hands of the farmers that they, don't, they are not dependent anymore for, and their money, the most important thing for the farmers is their money does not go out of the community anymore.